So good morning and welcome to Greylock Works. My name is Jennifer Maxey and I'm the mayor of the city of North Adams. And I'm so grateful for all of you coming out tonight. I'd like for today, it feels like my time for me. Um, I'd like to thank Sal and Carla for hosting this event in this beautiful space and all the work that they do here at Greylock Works. Um, I'd also like to thank Representative Barrett and Senator Paul Mark for being with us tonight. But my most exciting part of my day is the fact that we have our new leadership team at the state here with us in North Adams in their first month in office. One thing that I've really learned over the past year is um, the mayor can be, uh, the position of mayor can be a little lonely. It can be uh, difficult. Uh, but the one thing that keeps me going is the state delegation that we have and the great leadership and confidence that I have in our new administration. I am so excited for this upcoming year and many years to come. Um, I'm honored tonight to introduce Secretary Howell for being here, and we are sharing stories about Neville's Donuts. I think we're dating ourselves. Yes. Um, I'm also honored to introduce my mentor for the last year, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. But my new friend, my partner in crime, who keeps me going and sends me great texts all the time, our governor of the state of Massachusetts, Mara Healy. Thank you so much. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It is great to be back in North Adams. It is always great to be anywhere in the first years. I'm delighted to be with my teammate, your teammate, uh, the Commonwealth's terrific, amazing Lieutenant Governor, Ken Driscoll, who has spent a lot of time in North Adams and in this region and shares with me everything I'm going to say. Um, I'm also thrilled to be joined by Secretary Howe, Yvonne Howe, is our new Secretary of Economic Development. I'm grateful to her and to also Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, for the work they're already doing. Some of it you're going to hear about in just a few minutes. Um, but uh, importantly, uh, uh, Secretary Howe knows this region, cares a lot about this region. She's a, a graduate of, of Williams College and, uh, and has a home here and is very, very much committed to doing everything she can to be sure that we're the administration that is about driving economic development, growth, opportunity, economic mobility for folks here and across the region. I am thrilled um, to be here with my colleagues in government. I've had the privilege the last eight years to work with incredible people in the legislature and no two better representatives than Representative Barrett and Senator, I get to call you that now, Senator Mark. Um, and in the Lieutenant Governor and I are going to be visiting some properties today, here and in other parts, looking at projects that really are um, a credit to the legislature and the legislative leadership of this district in making sure that projects like this receive the funding, whether it's through a bond bill or otherwise, but receive the funding that enables the, the creation. And, you know, I just want to thank them for their partnership and their, their partnership, their leadership, you know, here in, in the district uh, and their advocacy. And we look forward to finding ways to, to partner in the, in the future as we move forward. Uh, and speaking of partners, Mayor, uh, Mayor Maxey, I'm uh, delighted in getting to know you over the last uh, year or more, really. Um, and we've actually spent some time together. In fact, it was just a few months ago that uh, she and I were at Fresh Grass together, for those in the know. Um, no, I wasn't campaigning, I was simply really excited to get out, as I am always, to visit these parts and to see um, Tanya Tucker play. <laughs> and then, actually, I was here, we came here for dinner, after. Um, and I have to say, it was really special to be here at Greylock, and, and I just uh, commend the work that Carla and Sal and their teams have done, because Many years ago, I stood as your Attorney General up on the roof of what was just this, this shell of a building and an idea. We did a Brownfields Covenant, and through the incredible partnership of, of so many, and through the, the fortitude and the leadership of, of Carla and Sal, 
we now and we get to come upon this space and to see this incredible, incredible example of what's possible when people match vision uh, along with investment. And it's super, super cool to, to be here this morning. And um, this is indeed just the close of our second week in office, okay? We just, we just got this gig about, yeah, I mean, honestly, two weeks ago. And it was very important to the LG and me and our team that we come to North Adams. Uh, we have said throughout, and we said on the trail, that we would be a team and an administration that is about all parts of the state. And um, that is certainly what, what this visit is about and meant to represent. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're announcing today. Uh, today, before uh, I left the House, I was able to sign some proposed legislation, and I'll tell you about that. Um, today, we're here to mark and to celebrate the filing of what we call our 2023 Immediate Needs Bond Bill. Uh, and again, I want to thank folks on my team for all their hard work and quick work over the last two weeks to put this together. This legislation seeks $987 million in bond authorization to ensure that critical housing and economic development programs across the state can continue to serve the people of Massachusetts without interruption. So important programs, we want to make sure they continue, and they continue by way of funding. This includes production and preservation of affordable rental housing, public housing, climate resilient housing, and transit oriented developments. It also reauthorizes funding for cities and towns, including targeted funding for rural and small towns to support libraries, seaport development, housing, tourism, and planning. It also supports the Middle Mile Broadband Program, which expands high-speed internet to communities across the state, especially rural communities here in the Berkshires, and we understand how important the work is uh, to make that real. One of the most immediate needs it will address is funding for MassWorks. This is the state's largest and most flexible source of capital funds to municipalities for public infrastructure projects. These projects support housing production, spur economic development, and create jobs across the state. This bill seeks $400 million for MassWorks alone and extends its authorization into fiscal year 2028 supporting additional investments in critical infrastructure projects across the state for the next five years. And we're here at Greylock Works because it's a prime example of the impact of the MassWorks program. Greylock has received several millions of dollars from MassWorks over the years to support the renovation of this wonderful mill building and turning it into the vibrant uh, place that it is with lots of great stuff going on. Uh, with the help of state funding, and again, thank you to the legislature, Greylock has been able to provide good jobs with more housing for people in the community and spur economic development for the region. And these are the types of innovative projects our administration wants to support across the state. And with the 2023 Immediate Needs Bond Bill, we're one step closer to doing just that. Um, we also will be filing, because this is just the beginning, we do plan to file a more comprehensive bond bill later in the session uh, that hopefully will make more progress towards our, our shared goals. We also filed, are filing today a bill that will authorize the state to borrow an additional $400 million to fund roads and bridges under Chapter 90 for the next two years. So that is also another piece of, 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 of legislation that we are filing. Um, that we think is, is absolutely necessary and important. Again, uh, I thank you for, for, on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor and myself and our administration, uh, we really thank you for the opportunity to visit and be with you all here today and just want to celebrate uh, the incredible work and progress of so many in this region and know that you will have a partner in, in all of us. So thank you very much. We are continuing to look at that. We're continuing, certainly, I expect there to be, absolutely. Uh, 
and uh, you know that work continues. We'll make announcements as soon as we're ready. We're working through cabinet secretaries and, and a few other positions, but obviously there are a lot of critical, important positions to fill, and uh, we are both committed to making sure we have representation from Western Massachusetts. Are you still planning on filing or supporting legislation that the state government in compliance with public record laws? Uh, I'm not sure about filing legislation. I remain committed to making sure that you know this administration operates with transparency, and I've said that we're probably going to do things that are different from the way other administrations have done things in the past. Uh, I support the public records law and its, and its application to the executive branch, and I think we can do that you know, as we go along. I'm not sure that it necessitates legislation. Thank you. Governor, why was it important for you, at the close of the second week, to, to make this visit out to the Berkshires? Um, I'm going to... I'll, I'll answer, and I know you'll want to hear from our lieutenant governor as well on this. Um, I think, you know, for me, it is absolutely critical that the people of the Berkshires and Western Massachusetts know that they have a partner in us, know that they have an administration who sees you, who hears you, and who's going to work with you. And that's what it means to be a commonwealth. This is a great state, and you know, it's just, it's driven home to me every time I, I, I come to this area and uh, take in its beauty and, and, and take in also some of the challenges that confront the reason. And we've had conversations about some of those real challenges around affordability, we've got real issues with housing, we've got issues with economic development, and, you know, employment, we've got workforce related, we've got, you know, issues in, in, in terms of making sure that we have the funding for roads and bridges, but also our public buildings. Um, and of course here and, and around the state we've got real issues with mental health and substance use disorder, right? But, you know, we view this uh, as, a, as an opportunity to work together in partnership um, to, to move things forward. And, you know, I remember this summer when I was here listening to the band from, from Jury and they were out, they were playing out in the courtyard there, right? And the reason we do this work and the reason we come here is for those kids. Our job is to make sure that they have all the opportunities, that they have all the opportunities that every child in the state should have when it comes to, to a future that you know, is exciting and, uh, and filled with hope. And that's, that's why I come here. Um, and again, I want to introduce Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Who, um, if you don't know her already, you will come to, uh, to, to love her. And, um, her commitment, you know, particularly her understanding as somebody who has been a mayor, uh, and I think once you're a mayor, you're probably always a mayor, um, but that is super, super important because the funding that we're talking about today, uh, and you know, you, 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 the mayors, um, you know this is where the rubber meets the road, and uh, Kim brings with her not only that insight, uh, but also a commitment to making sure that we're doing everything as an administration to serve North Adams, to serve the Berkshires, to serve Western Mass. So, Kim, do you want to? Thank you, Governor, and I think you said it best. There are 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts. We feel a real obligation to all of them. And so this is day 12, our first, first full day, 12 here, and I think we wanted to be in this particular region because we know all of the solutions are not the same for every community. There's a lot of things that knit us together, but there are unique attributes and, and certainly needs that are different. We want to be here so we're aware of what's happening on the ground, partnering with local leaders, members of the legislature who know their regions best to make sure when we are in our in the state house in Boston, we have an eye on what's happening in this particular region. So this is our first trip here as a, as a team. It certainly won't be our last. And we care deeply about making sure what's happening on the ground, the quality of life, the people who live here, uh, that we hear that and that we act upon those needs. So happy to be here. And uh, again, we'll be back. Thank you.